Hello everyone and welcome back to our quest series. We are revisiting this series to solve a few bugs that people have noticed uh, over the past few weeks as well as add in a little extra features that we forgot to add in. So let's go ahead and put those into play now. Okay, so we're going to go through uh, a few bugs first um, regarding the tracker. So the tracker bug we have at the moment is that when we are tracking a quest, let's go get this quest, and say track this quest here. Uh, there's my tracker, and if I were to pick up items, no problem. But then if I was to go track a different quest, we get two overlapping. Now the reason why this happens is because I made a mistake where I made the quest log. So on the quest log, I did the on tracking part here to be on the quest log, which is bad because when the quest log gets closed, the references to the tracker are lo obviously lost along with it. So therefore we can't use the quest log to track items. In fact, you can really see I tried doing this right at the start of the uh, series, uh, but we didn't finish it. And that is adding a track quest to our quest log component. So if I go to my quest log component, you can see here we had a, made a track quest function, but we actually didn't do anything with it. So let's actually make this work for us. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to take all of this you see here and we're going to cut it and go to our quest log component and paste it there and when we do that this variable is going to be grayed out because it does not yet exist on our quest log component just right click on it and create variable tracker and that should make that blue that should make that blue in fact you can just plug that straight into there like that um and update the quest as such okay um the next thing is our quest actor so we track quest needs to know which quest we want to be tracking so we're going to drag quest actor here to the function and then connect it to that one as well and that's it that's all we've got to do here we can compile and close that and go back to our quest log so now the task is to get hold of our quest log component and um take to run that function so we get the player character And we're going to get components by class. And we're going to choose our quest log component. Like so. And then we can call the track quest function. So plug that in and then plug in the quest actor as such. And now this should work when I go into here and pick up the quest accept track it pick up a couple and track a different quest we see you've got no longer any issues there and if we go back to the first quest i go track that you can see it's replaced it as per normal so the next thing we're going to fix is add in the stages we mentioned it obviously in our planning stages but we didn't actually implement it so we'll go ahead and implement that. And in there, we have to go to the quest base. And inside the quest base, there is a function we want to look at, and that is, is objective complete? So when the objective is complete, it needs to check um, if the all the objectives are complete or not. So this bit at the end here, we're checking to see if all objectives are complete, tick is completed. So between these two things happening, we need to increment the stage and check to see if it's a valid stage. If it is, we're changing objectives, and if it's not, we are then making the quest complete. So let's just disconnect this for now. And now put this into a branch, like so. And then we're going to take the current stage integer, and we're going to do increment it with the plus plus node. So that will increase the current stage by one. We then want to check to see if that's a valid stage. So what you do, you drag out your quest details struct, and we're going to split it open to see our stages array. And all you can do is drag that out and do is valid index, and plug in our resulting pin. And then that will go into a branch. Now, if it's false, then is completed will be set to true, meaning that we've completed all the quests we need to do we then 
if it's true, we want to do get quest details to update the quest details in our quest. So then we're going to go into the quest details and in here, we just want to make sure that the current stage has been plugged into the get here. And I think that is it here. Yep, that's it there. We then want to go to our quest log component, not quest log component, sorry, our quest log. Uh, this like menu screen here. And in here, we're looking at stages and we're getting the stage zero. Obviously, we're not getting zero anymore. We're getting the actual value from the current stage. So just drag out the current quest actor and get the current stage from there. Get current stage, plug that in. Okay. Um, and I think there may be one more. Uh, let's go to the tracker, tra check that one out. And make sure, yeah, here we go. It's again, zero in the get here, detail stages, zero. So this is on the tracker widget. So we're gonna drag out our quest actor and get the current stage that we're on. And just plug that into there. Okay. Oh, right, so to test this out, I'm gonna go into my quest log uh, data, uh, data table here. And I'm gonna add a stage to my quest here. So this quest has got the first stage where I'm doing no interaction and picking up those things. And in the second stage here, we're gonna call this one uh, location stage. Uh, the objectives for this stage are gonna be uh, reach the other side. Description, reach the other side. Uh, location is the type there. We'll name it other side. And quantity, oh, quantity is going to be one. And yep, that'll do. Hit save on that. And then I just want to make sure my map, the location marker we put in before, is actually called other side. Remembering that. Uh, nope, we'll just put that in there. Objective ID to match that one there. So let's test this out. If I go push play and pick up the quest, we only get the first stage uh, on that, which is good. And I go into my thing, click on it. And again, we're only getting the first stage showing, track that and we're good to go. So now let's complete this quest stage. Collect all the orbs and interact. And now you can see the other stage has automatically gone to reach the other side. So now I have to go to the other side and that is now complete. And I'll collect the rewards. Now, as you saw there, the tracker uh, changed to show uh, a null value, basically. And that's because the stage increased. Um, so the, the quest still there, it's just increased and is um, now no longer valid. But the problem is we don't want it to show that. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna make it say something different. So at the moment, we are doing this current stage and in get into here. I'm gonna to check to see if it's a valid stage before we do the get. So drag out from here, is valid state, oh, is valid index, sorry. There we go. And plug that in. And we're gonna put that into a branch. Like so. And if it is uh, valid and it's true, go to the for each loop as normal. But if it's false, I'm going to change the text to say something different. So I'm going to um, go to my designer view and just add in a text here underneath this one. So text. And I'll just put it in between the title and the box for objectives. Oh, not in the box above the box there we go so you got the title of the uh the quest the bit i'm going to do now and the box of objectives and i'm going to change this to be collapsed so basically when it's not visible it doesn't take up any space so I change that to collapsed and i'm going to just uh hard code the name of this in quest complete 
Okay, and we're gonna make that variable and name it. And yeah, there we go. And so you could do anything else you want to do on here, color, images, whatever you want. Um, I'll put a couple spaces in between enter in. There we go. Right, so in the game it'll look normal, but then in the tracker, when the false is triggered, we'll take the uh, the text complete and set its visibility to be uh, hidden. Oh no, not hidden, sorry, visible um, to make it show. So now let's test that out. Got my quest, accept. Oh, let's track it. There we are. Two, three, four, five, six. Get the orbs done. Cut the quest at stage. Reach the other side now. And that will trigger. And it's now saying quest complete. Okay, and I go hand in that quest. Done. So the last thing I want to go through is to show you how to make it so a quest is auto completed. This is very important if you're doing something like a linear game, like a uh, like a shooter, for example, or anything like that, and you want the objective to update and change uh, during the gameplay, and you're going to do auto complete quests and or missions basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our quest detail structure, and we're going to add. I'll just that noise. We're going to add a variable for autocomplete. Autocomplete. And that'll be a boolean. And then we go to our quest data. And we're going to make this first quest here autocomplete. So we're going to just tick autocomplete. Done. There. So what will happen now is if I go to the quest uh, base and go to the function we were on earlier uh, is objective complete and on is objective complete this is ending with is completed i then want to check to see if this thing is going to be auto completed or an auto turned in um so uh we're going to drag out our quest details we're going to split it open or you can break it open whatever you want to do Autocomplete is going to go into a branch, and if it is auto-completed, I'm then going to just do the turn in quest uh, function from our our quest or component. So we can go and get a player character, get our component by class, and get the quest log component and I can call in turn in quest and the quest ID is the same one that's on our quest base so that first quest is set to autocomplete so if we go back to the game and take the quest in track it okay and we can go through collect our orbs da, 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 get our strange object reach the other side and this should all go in quite quick there you go done and you saw a little xp print string come up up at the top there and there you go um that should make it a lot more dynamic and more useful for other types of games like linear action games for example if you want to keep giving player quests um you can do and the same like auto objective so if you're doing like a linear game like level just do one quest uh, like and then make each uh, sort of objective delivery to the player be a different stage. So stage one would be uh, like if you think about Halo's first mission, it'd be much like reach the bridge. Okay, that would be the first stage. Second stage is now repel the enemy forces. The next stage would be reach the escape shuttle. Yeah, and, and that's how you make it auto uh, skip along until it gets to the end. And when it ends, then you can complete the level. Um, so it works just like that really so you can use it not just for rpgs but other games too and by all means please experiment with it and do let me know if you have any issues i'm happy to go back and uh rework it or add some fixes or adjustments to it to make it suit whatever trying thing whatever thing you're trying to do 
And there you go. And as I said, if you have any requests about this quest system, you want to see more or add extra features to it, do let me know in the comments below. Always interested to see how people are using this. And uh, do experiment trying to make it with different games as well, uh, diff different types of genres of games. So it'd be really uh, worthwhile to see how people are using this system. Once again, thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. And remember, if you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where a donation of just $1 gives you access to all of my videos and many other bits of content uh, early before everyone else. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Thank you.